Hello ladies and children, welcome back to Helium Lemon 15's Wild and Wonderful World of Video Games. In the last part we defeated Skulkita and got the captain's hat and made some comments about this game and Twin Peaks which weren't really pertinent at all. Um, there is some... oh, that is a skeleton swinging around on a tree branch. Huh? Oh, Captain, excuse me, sir. Huh? Oh, Captain, excuse me, sir. Okay. So, since it's the evening of the first day, we want to not kill these, uh, stal stal child stal children? Is that the word? Ah, Captain, sir, excuse me, sir. Everyone give the Captain your attention. We haven't seen you in some time, Captain, sir. As per your orders, sir, we've been guarding these graves closely. We have all been expecting your next order, sir. What shall we do? Open the grave, of course. Uh, open it? Again, with the Twin Peaks influence. Although, I could be making that up. <clears throat> yes, sir. Twin Peaks doesn't necessarily have any grave opening. Does it? I don't know. My friend keeps telling me that the Twin Peaks Season 3 is like the best thing on TV ever. All right. So there's a bunch of like money and stuff over there. Oh, but I don't, I don't believe that's a thing yet. So let's just go through this passage and see what's in this passage. A lot of bats. I always wondered what that sound that the bats make, that like clicking sound is supposed to be. Is that supposed to be the bat is like biting you? Or, or is that just like its wings flipping around? There's one. Can I hit that one? Oh yeah, uh, my dad and I watch Sven sometimes. Actually nowadays we don't even, we don't even care about it that much anymore. Not to say that Sven isn't funny, we just kind of find the show a little bit cheesy but by now. And we don't really care about most of the movies that are on there. <clears throat> because he's just kind of a host that does old horror movies. Uh, but the movie that was on last night, because it's on on Saturday nights, was um, Billy the Kid vs. Dracula. And I thought that was the most contrived movie plot that, or movie that I've ever heard of. It was funny, I was watching the Disney uh, Aladdin movie in theaters recently because it just came out and my parents and I wanted to see it. And that was a waste of magic right there. Um, but no, the Disney Aladdin movie was pretty good, the new one. Even though I've heard people that don't want to see it because, you know, they're a fan of the original and they don't, like, want to, I don't know, they, they don't have, like, high hopes. Or at least, I don't know, they don't think anything can replace the original, which I don't think that's what it's trying to do, is replace the original, but I don't even see the third torch. Oh, anyway, it was kind of funny. Every time... Every time there was, like, a plot device, and it was really obvious, I would, like, turn to one of my parents and go, <coughs> Contrivance. Where's the third torch? Aren't there three? One. Two. Oh, three. One. Come on, I can't even see it. Oh, I can see it on my computer screen. My TV's too dark, but I can see it on my computer screen. It's because I'm using a splitter cable, and that makes it darker on my TV. So apologies if there were moments, there are moments when I'm playing this game and it looks like I can't see something right in front of my face. So now we get to fight an iron knuckle for the first time in this game. And this game only has a few iron knuckles, much less than Ocarina of Time. Although in Ocarina of Time the iron knuckles were only really in the spirit temple. 
And now the boy is getting fast and furious. And I can't even lock onto him. And he does a lot of damage, so you want to stay far away from him. And unfortunately, there are no big columns that... that give you hearts. Uh, but fortunately I didn't die, so that went well. And what is this? There's a big curtain just in a tomb. There's a there's a curtain. What is this, a high school play? Okay, if that isn't Twin Peaks, I don't know what is. Are you the one who freed my soul? It's Luigi. No, seriously, that looks like something out of Luigi's Mansion. I serve the Ikana royal family. I am the composer called Flat. As a composer, I think that's a little bit cheesy, but well, whatever. That's just because I'm a composer. The songs connected to the royal family that remain here were all composed by my brother and I. Oh, Sharp, my dear brother. Like, really, Flat and Sharp? Oh, well, it's a Nintendo game. I can't complain. <laughs> At least they're not Rimsky and Korsakov or something like that. He sold his soul to the devil and was the one who locked me in here. So what, is he Charlie... Sh the devil went down to Georgia? Who wrote that song? Or, not who wrote it, but who's like the fiddle player that made it famous? You who do not fear the dead, learn well the song that is inscribed behind me. I think it's Charlie Daniels or something, but I have to look that up. The devil went down to Georgia, gonna find a soul to something, I don't know. And if you ever meet my brother, I'd like you to inform him the thousand years of raindrops summoned by my song are, t are my tears. The thunder that strikes the earth is my anger. And Strike the Earth is the name of a song in Shovel Knight, but this game came out by Shovel Knight, uh, before Shovel Knight, by, by 14 years. So, oh well. By 13 years. No, 14 years. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm talking about Shovel Knight, but it's probably because it's a good game. It is a good game. I just started playing the Plague of Shadows campaign for the first time uh, this week. In fact, this Monday was Memorial Day, so that's when I was playing it. And this song should be familiar to anyone who's played Ocarina of Time, or gotten far enough at least. Maybe you've just played the beginning of Ocarina of Time. But, uh, it's the Song of Storms, and it does have some use in this game, but it's kind of strange, and it causes rain. It's actually, it's required for, uh, the plot or whatever of this game, which is different from Ocarina of Time a little bit, because in that game it's never exactly required. Although, I don't know, it might, it's, it's not required for a dungeon, I don't think. Some things are, like, required for a dungeon in Ocarina of Time when they really shouldn't be. Like, Din's Fire being required for a dungeon, that seems kind of odd to me. That seems kind of like an unfair game choice. So, let's advance to the second night. Whisking your all your troubles away into the night, into the morning. I mean, who doesn't feel better in the morning? Who doesn't worry their brains out at night and then feel better in the morning? Or not necessarily feel better, but just feel like less worried. Just feels like, you know, oh, it's the morning, I don't really feel anything, so I'm just gonna play some video games, or I don't know, that's just what I do in the morning, because that's the habit that I've cultivated, but, anyway, so the next grave we're going to open is this one, and you notice the enemy song stops playing as soon as I put on the captain's hat, give the captain your attention, as per your orders, we have all been expecting... And my neck is starting to hurt, and my voice is starting to hurt, so... The sooner we can finish up this episode, the better. But there's... I, I would just like to, uh... Um... 
go investigate this uh, next graveyard. Beneath the graveyard, part two, parte due. Pasta fagioli. No, I'm kidding. Pasta! Give me more pasta. Okay. You're sneaky. So that's awfully convenient that we can lock on to these enemies even though we can't see them. And I bet you'd be able to tell what they are just from the sounds. <clears throat> I don't want to take too much damage, but it looks like we're already taking damage uh, because I want to save my damage for the iron knuckle fight. Oh, come on. In Ocarina of Time, you can kill those things using the hook shot. And kill that guy using the arrow. Kill this guy using bow and arrow. And this isn't B Breath of the Wild, so I don't have to worry about my bow and arrow breaking, which is kind of nice. Breath of the Wild, you always have to worry about your weapons breaking. I mean, like, come on, man. No, I, I realize that's, that's the point. That's what they were going for. And anyone who knows Zelda knows that if a wall makes a funny sound like that, that means it's bombable. So, let's get that taken. Oh, that's kind of creepy. And I was like, why is it playing the normal enemy song? <clears throat> Should be playing the mini boss theme or nothing. <clears throat> and now your boy's angry. Let him take a swipe. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> uh. Okay, I was just close enough to get that last hit on him. And this chest gives us... Come on, Link, don't be stupid. Open the chest. Open the chest! Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da! And we get a piece of heart. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, now, these things are bombable, I believe. No, they're not. But they're piles of skulls. I like that. That's a nice touch, of course. Alright, so it seems like we are finished with this section of the, or at least this little thing. And I wonder if we can just warp out. Let's try it. That song has no effect here. Oh, no. No, we can just... Oh, okay. I, I guess that makes sense because it's not a regular just dungeon, but I was still expecting... Oh, that song has no effect here. All right. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Majora's Mask. If you did indeed watch this video to the end, that means a lot to me. I hope you're enjoying this playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, even though I'm terrible at this game. And I will see you in the next episode, partitura, episodio, installment of this video game, or playthrough. Bye. Have a good day. Take care of your mom. Drink lots of milk.